Welcome to All-Star Telescope here at the Painted Pony Resort in Rodeo, New Mexico. Today we're going to attempt a time-lapse video during the daytime and in this particular situation we have some beautiful rolling clouds off to the west in the Chiricahua Mountains and we're going to uh, try just showing you how we can set up to do a great daytime time-lapse video of those clouds rolling across the sky. So for some of the equipment that we use for daytime time-lapse, we need a SLR camera with a fairly wide angle uh, lens on it to get good uh, wide scenery. In addition, we're going to be using a neutral density filter. This is a real high neutral density filter. So the exposure length is going to be anywhere from 6 to 10 seconds in broad daylight. So a neutral density filter will smooth things out. And then, of course, your, uh, your timer so that we can set the length of the exposure and the number of exposures. And it's also very good to keep track of time. So in some form, having your watch or an iPhone or some kind of a clock. Because we're going to be wanting to do 45 minutes to half an hour of exposures in order to be able to create a fairly decent video. Okay, the first thing we'll do is take the neutral density filter and put this onto the, uh, the lens of the camera. And then we'll need to add our self timer, plug that into, into our outlet here. And return our lens shade to the front of the camera. Once we have that set up, we'll attach everything to the tripod. What we've set up here is the camera with its various settings. And you can see we've composed a beautiful part of the sky and the mountains here in the background. So part of that is uh, getting your framing what you want for the, the next hour and a half of uh, pictures. And uh, the motion is going to be primarily in the clouds here. For the daytime setting, here's the various settings that we've chosen for today in the bright sunlight. Uh, we've put it entirely on manual settings over here so we can adjust our shutter speed and aperture. For uh, daytime bright sunlight, about 8 seconds would be appropriate. We've got a f14 for our uh, aperture, an ISO speed of 100, and this should produce uh, reasonably good shots for us. If it was at nighttime, we would extend our uh, shutter speed to 30 seconds or longer, and uh, perhaps adjust also our uh, aperture as well. You'll notice especially on here that we have continuous shooting, and that's uh, set up by our autofocus drive and uh, on the Canon camera so that once it has an 8 second exposure it'll take uh, another 8 second exposure until we finally stop. So on our um, self timer the only thing we're going to be using is the, uh, the locking for the uh, shutter and the camera then every 8 seconds will take a shot. If uh, we had set this for just automatic it would just go click 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 taking one picture after another but in this particular case, every eight seconds, because that's what it's set for. So I think we're, uh, we're pretty much set up. We've focused it. We've added fresh batteries, a large enough memory card in order to be able to take an hour and a half of exposures at eight seconds each. So getting our setup in preparation is the biggest part of uh, getting our, our time lapse ready to shoot. And uh, we're pretty close to getting started now with the uh, actual capturing of these pictures. Okay, so now we're going to uh, start the process of taking the pictures. So I'll start here by uh, locking this down and sliding it into position. And now you'll see that uh, it's just locked in. So every eight seconds, you'll uh, hear the camera taking a picture. And again, just to kind of keep track of where we're at, we've got our iPhone and we're going to hit the start button on it so that we know uh, how long we've been taking pictures. And uh, now we can walk away, have a cup of coffee, Actually, we do want to keep a fairly close eye on the equipment, but uh, this will uh, allow us now to, uh, to know how long we've been taking the pictures, uh, 8 seconds uh, each in length. Okay, so uh, welcome back. It's uh, an hour and 41 minutes since we uh, first started setting up the uh, time lapse, so it's been taking uh, second, 8 second shot pictures over here. and. Uh, the clouds have changed quite considerably since we started, so that will show up nicely in the video. One thing we didn't mention when you're shooting these, you might want to use large JPEG, or if you've got unlimited resources for memory and power, 
you can shoot in raw and then there'll be opportunity for better adjustments with, uh, with raw. But uh, we're just about to, uh, to the end now after uh, an hour and 40 some minutes of uh, continuous shooting and we'll be able to see shortly what this video is going to look like. Uh, but uh, this is the general setup and uh, just do lots of uh, experimenting with it and uh, you'll come out with some very successful time-lapse videos. Okay, so on our uh, little self-timer there, all we're doing is uh, clicking it to the uh, off position and that will allow us to take the very last picture and uh, then we can go in and process them in QuickTime Pro. The final steps is to compile your photos in your computer to make it into a time lapse. I use the program Aperture to import my photos, though other people use programs such as Adobe Lightroom, even Adobe Photoshop. Um, none of them I have particular preference about. Um, Aperture, so I open up um, one of my photos, I've already imported them, and I start making a few changes. As I shot this in RAW, I can adjust the white balance, I can adjust my exposure, which I've already tweaked all of these settings. I've made sure that my horizon line is relatively straight. And then I apply those same changes to all the photos. In Aperture, it's very easy. All you have to do is to select the photo you've made the changes, and you can lift the adjustments. And in fact, you can actually select all the photos and then stamp those and it will stamp those changes such as your color, white balance, your horizons. Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Bridge um, all do the same uh, thing. You just have to find out where those items are at. Once you have done that, you again want to select all of them and you're ready to export them. I go to my export in versions. You want to have them all in the same folder without any other photos as you um, still need to put them into a movie format. I've already made a preset called JPEG in 1080p which um, reduces the quality and the size of them to be the same size as a high definition television. I don't need the high 22 or 30 megapixels that my digital camera shoots at. I then go ahead and export my photos. Um, I've already done this so I will skip this uh, step but it does take quite a while to go through each of the photos, so give your computer some time. Once your photos have exported into a format such as JPEG, you then need to compile them into your movie. I use a program called QuickTime Player 7. This is not QuickTime Player X, which is a, um, Apple's latest version. This is their one before then, however, it is still available on their website, and you do have to pay for the $30 license in order for you to do this open image sequence or else the free one still has this grayed out and you're not able to do that. Do you know other programs are easily available on the internet including the Adobe programs already have it built in to do it. You need to open it and then you need to choose your first um, photo that you have exported. Notice that all of them are there. You hit open and then you say what frame rate. If you're going to make this for um, a blockbuster movie, you probably want it more at 24 frames per second. However, 30 frames per second is a very smooth one that is the same as televisions, so that is what I'm going to do. It quickly puts it together, and it's, again, my computer screen is smaller than what is available, so I want to make it into full screen. And I've got my time lapse.